this is about infinite limits and what that means is the limit as x approaches some number like maybe in this case it's uh, 4, 5, something like that and the limit doesn't actually approach a y value because like both of these which comprise f of x these are going up to infinity and so that's called an infinite limit when the limit is not a real number and remember infinity is not a real number and so <clears throat> the limit as x approaches for let's say from the left is positive infinity and also likewise from the right the limit is positive infinity now some books and some professors will say that this limit does not exist that's true these limits technically do not exist that's because uh, we're approaching infinity which is not a number so how can we say that the limit exists because infinity doesn't exist so that's why some say that these limits do not exist infinite limits almost always occur in asymptote and that's because asymptotes produce just kind of the nature of what an asymptote is it's, it's this imaginary pink line or purple I'm sorry line where the graph kind of hugs that line but never actually touches it and that produces functions that go all the way to infinity or down to negative infinity and let's say we have some function like this x minus 3 over x squared minus 9 again this is rational because this is a ratio or a fraction so this is a rational function so what we need to do is factor the top and the bottom tops already finished the bottom factors uh, like x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares so that means this must factor as x plus 3 x minus 3 and we can see that the x minus 3 will cancel and we learned last time that that produces a whole at x equals 3 and this right here the one that does not cancel will produce an asymptote at x equals negative 3 so now what we have is a graph where uh, we have an asymptote over here at negative 3 so this is going to be a line that the graph will never touch and we have a hole somewhere wherever the graph is right here at x equals 3 somewhere that's where we're going to have a hole and so if we wanted to graph this maybe one way to be to make a table or you might know what this rational function looks like if you don't you can make a table a little quick x and y and plot a couple points we know we're going to be approaching this asymptote we just don't know if maybe it's going down or we're up toward the asymptote from the right side here so one way is just to check some points like zero if x was zero y would be negative three over negative nine or one-third so we know the graph goes through this ordered pair and let's say maybe negative one that would be negative four over negative 4 over plug in a negative 1 here we'll get a 1 1 minus 9 is negative 8 so that is 1 half so negative 1 1 half so we can see the graph is going up so there we go and this probably levels off somewhere like this which we'll learn tomorrow about limits at infinity this has a horizontal asymptote at 0 which is the next lesson but for this lesson I could describe the limit as x approach approaches negative 3 from the right as positive infinity now this graph has another portion over here on the left side of the asymptote that goes down to negative infinity so we would say the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is negative infinity because the graph goes this way so that's how you talk about one-sided limits uh, when you're talking about limits, infinite limits. If I wanted to discuss the continuity of this graph, this graph would be continuous on negative infinity to negative 3 and negative 3 to infinity. And we can see that's because we do not include negative 3. That's an asymptote. The graph never actually touches that. So 
we'll put a parenthesis there. You never include positive or mi uh, negative infinity. And so here we have another rational function. Uh, the top's already factored. The bottom needs to be factored. So we'll take the x out. Two terms. It's not a difference of squares. There must be something in common. And there is. The x is in common. Pull that out. Now we see that the x will cancel. That means there's a hole there. Uh, at whatever value I put in right here that makes this whole thing zero, so that must be zero. So there's a hole at zero. And there's an asymptote right here, because this one didn't cancel, at x equals one. Okay, so this graph is a rational function that has a hole and an asymptote. And we know that the asymptote's at one, so if you wanted, you might could draw that in over here. That's really crooked, but it's going in. And somewhere on this line where x equals zero, when the graph crosses this line, you have to draw a hole there, because there's a hole. Okay, so if I wanted to talk about the limit as x approaches one from the left, I know there's an asymptote here, so I know this is either gonna be positive or negative infinity. In other words, the graph's either gonna go down or come up, and I just need to figure out which one it is. So let's uh, maybe make a table. And I know I can't choose zero, because if I chose zero, I have a hole there. So there's no value here. You know, zero over zero minus zero, that can't be done. So let's choose something like negative one. So that would be negative one over one plus one. So negative one half. So that's down here somewhere. How about if I chose negative ten? That would be negative ten over one hundred and ten. And that's really small. So somewhere over here at negative 10, I have a, a number that's close to the x-axis, and I can see that these are kind of going down. And so this limit, as x approaches 1 from the left, is going to be negative infinity. It's getting kind of sloppy here. Make some room. If I want to do the limit, as x approaches 1 from the right, I'll make that table again. Maybe I'll pick numbers like uh, 10 and way out here 100 maybe. See if I put a 10 in, I get a 10 over 100 minus 10 or 10 over 90 which is 1 9th. So this number is a positive 1 9th. It's really close to the x-axis. What if I chose a 2? Then we have a 2 over 4 minus 2 which is 2 over 2, which is 1. So we can tell that this one's higher than this one. So the graph must be coming up when you get closer to the asymptote, or going down as you move to the right. So that means that this is positive infinity. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. That means I'm approaching this asymptote from the right, from this side over here. OK. And one more. Here's another rational function. Both are already factored, nothing cancels, so that means that whatever value makes the bottom zero, which would be a two, we can see that two minus two is nothing. So when x is two, that's a bad thing. So that must produce an asymptote right here at x equals two. And if you want to know the limit as x approaches two from the right, we know there's an asymptote there, so it must either be positive or negative infinity. So again, plot a few points. So maybe uh, 1. This would be 1 over 1 minus 2, which is 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. Maybe stick in a 0. 1 over 0 minus 2, or 1 over negative 2. Negative 1 half is right here. So we can see that these are going down, which means that this is negative infinity. The limit as x approaches 2, I'm sorry, that's from the left. It should be from the left. 2 from the right means i got to pick numbers over here, maybe like 10 or something on the right side of 2, maybe 3. If I pick a 3, I get 1 over 1, which is 1. If I pick a 10, I get 1 over 8, so that's way down here. 1 8 is nearly at the x-axis, so we can see these are going up. 
toward positive infinity from the right. So positive infinity, and that's infinite limits. There's not much to these. This is a pretty easy lesson.